Because if we wait for the if we wait for the abuse to stop, they'll they'll change, right? You just have to be patient. Then they'll they'll change, right? Right? Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know that? Yeah, they're gonna change. I just have to be patient. We keep you know, we wait for people to change, and we think, oh, they'll 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 get better. They'll they'll change. You know, but. <clears throat> It's painful because that process of, of waiting is painful. Waiting for something to happen. And there's a couple of reasons it's painful, by the way. It's painful because you're enduring it, you know, during that process. Plus it's it's painful because you know you're you kind of you're psychologically wrapped up in the idea that somebody else has to do something. You know, I I guess think of it this way, like group work sucks. Right? For if, if you're nodding along like, yeah, group work sucks, that's because you're probably the person in the group who does a lot of the work. And if you're like, no, group work is wonderful. You might be one of the people who, who waits for everybody else to do the work. But if you're the person in the group who's trying to organize the group work, and then like you do your part, then you have to wait for other people to, to finish their parts. It's frustrating as can be. You, know? uh, you can think about that in terms of a, a relationship as well. You're, you're waiting for someone to, to change in some way. You're waiting for them to do something. Uh, it's painful because you're not in control. You have to wait on somebody else. It's entirely out of your, you just have to stand there and kind of wait for it to happen. You know, so it's painful for a couple of reasons. You're enduring it, and also because you're not in control of it. You know? And then also it's painful because you're thinking about, um, uh, as Jackie was saying, all the possible outcomes of this thing. You know? Then you go crazy thinking about it. So what do you try to do? Well, we try to forget. You know, we'll, we'll suppress it. We'll, we'll try to push it down. But... That's, I mean, that's painful also, especially if you're thinking about somebody in your life who used to be particularly important to your life. And then you try to forget that person. You know, when you think about somebody who was so important to you that they wrapped up most of your life, most of your thoughts, most of your actions. You can't imagine a day without that person, <coughs> talking to that person or whatever. And then one day you just you figure you have to let go, you have to, to, to forget. And that's painful, because that also means letting go of a large portion of your life that no longer exists. You know? and, it's, and sometimes you can feel like, man, that was like a waste of fill in the blank, however many years that was. And it doesn't just have to be um, a significant other, by the way. It can be just a friend. It can be a family member. Hell, that could even just be yourself, the old you. So it's, it's painful to, to forget those things. But not knowing which one to do, whether you should wait, or whether you should forget, he's saying that's the worst kind of suffering. It's kind of that in-between part there, where you don't know which way you should go. Um, but have you guys seen that? I don't know, it's not a meme, but it's a picture. Um, it's split on, you know, on the, has a guy on the bottom, a guy on the bottom, a guy on the top, and they're both digging. And it shows like one guy who's like who's digging, and there's and there's treasure on the other side. What's that? Yeah, and he gives up like right before. You know, he hits the treasure, he's turning back, but the other one is still digging and says, don't give up, because you never know what's going to, well, that's really, really bad advice, though. What's that? I saw a different one. What'd you see? I saw one where it's like, some guy comes over, steals one guy's work, and then keeps digging where he's digging, and then the other guy goes somewhere else and starts digging, but then he start, the other guy who went somewhere else start finding more treasure than the other guy. Mm -hmm. That's also a possibility. Yeah, that, that somebody else lays down a bunch of groundwork and then they walk away from it. And maybe you can see it for what it is and go, dude, this is really good. And they're like, <clears throat> no. Nah. They walk away from it. But you can pick up the work that they're doing and, and, and get what they're after. It's true. But also, I mean, how often, though, in life is there is there treasure at the end of the tunnel that we're digging? You know, how often is redemption at the bottom of that hole that we dig ourselves into? <laughs> you know, it's, 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 I don't know if anyone's ever, anybody ever hit any treasure because you kept digging yourself in a hole making things it you know, works for yourself, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, I dug deep enough, now everything worked out. You know, what do you find if you keep digging? So deep hole. Yeah, you find yourself in a deep hole, you find yourself in hell if you dig so deeply. You know, so there's a, there is a point where you've got to figure out whether something is worth abandoning and whether something is worth pursuing. And you know, a lot of times when we see stuff like this, we, we immediately turn towards relationships. Yeah, those, those are there. There's also a lot of other things that are there. You know, this is a lot of things in life. It's the kind of goals that we're pursuing. You know, if you have, if anybody in here wants to be a, a musician, 
let's say, or an entertainer of some kind. And it's easy to hear our, our heroes give out that speech, right? Don't give up on your dreams. You have to keep going no matter what. Um, what was the, what was the, the single that was released by some 42-year-old dude from Kansas? Who? Exactly. <laughs> Nobody comes out with their first single when they're 42 years old. No one's going to touch it. And they say, well, you don't know that. I know that. <laughs> right? We know it. We know it. It's just never. Well, just because it's never happened before it doesn't mean that's true. That's true. And just because a, an elephant hasn't dangled itself off of a cliff holding its tail onto a dandelion doesn't mean it can't happen, right? Um, I suppose if the physics are right, it's possible. You know, a lot of things are possible. Um, but how many 42-year-olds have to, have to throw their lives away pursuing that single before we finally say, probably not going to happen if that's your first single. You know? So at what point is it that you should, that you should turn away from it? Uh, I, don't know. I don't know. Maybe if it really is that good, then maybe you'll be discovered when you're, that, when, you're, when you're older. I don't know. It's possible, I suppose. But do you want to bet your life on the possible or the probable? Again, I don't know. It's a, it's a personal call. It's up to you what you think is going to be best for it. But figuring out when that point is, is it's difficult. Man. It's, it's, it's painful. Especially if it's something that you love. If it's, a, if it's you know, Whatever the thing is in life that you love, that you want to pursue, that you have a passion for, to one day have someone come along and just kind of say, yeah, it's not going to happen. And by someone coming along, it doesn't have to be an outside influence. That can be your inner voice. That can be you. That's telling yourself, yeah, I'm not, you know, not going to do this. Now you could say, man, if you had just dug a little bit further, you would have, I suppose that's possible. Yeah. But is it, is it probable? Is it likely? What do we want to bet our lives on? So, yeah, not knowing which. And especially this idea of, of, of all the possible permutations of your life. You know, for every single decision that you make, you're shutting yourself off from a million other decisions that you could have made. And you're, you know, thinking about the infinite combination of what your life could have been like. And with every single decision that you make, you narrow it and narrow it and narrow it and narrow it and narrow it. And that can cause a lot of anxiety if you really think about that. Like, oh, if I'd only done this or if I'd only done that, you know, my life would be so much different. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot of things in your life that one little thing could have changed everything. So what? <laughs> you know, do you live that life? I mean, you, know, you're, you wouldn't have lived the life that you're living right now. That's, of course, assuming it would have turned out the way you thought it was going to turn out. And let's face it, this is an important point. If, it, if, you're, if you're so good at predicting what the future is going to be like, well, you wouldn't be where you are right now, second-guessing your present. In other words, you may, we make the decisions that we make because we think, oh, if I go this way, things are going to be better. And so it doesn't do when we get here to go, I should have gone that way. Because if I had gone that way, that's where I would be. Are you good at, you're not, you've already proven you're not good at predicting where you would be. Otherwise, you wouldn't be where you are right now. So what that means is that it's not worthwhile to, to have those kinds of, well, to dwell on those kinds of thoughts of what life would be like if I had only done this, if I would only done that. The fact is, is that you are where you are. And so you deal with where you are. And where you are, chances are, probably not so bad. It's probably pretty good, probably, whether you realize it or not, because you're, you're, we judge our present circumstances by our imaginary alternatives, you know? And so, you can't judge by, by imaginary alternatives. It's fun sometimes, and when you do that, you should channel it, write a book, make a bunch of money. And then remember, I was the one who encouraged you to do it. So you come back, yeah, come back with a little... <laughs> I don't know, a case of Diet Coke or something, I don't know. <laughs> Questions? A helicopter. Yeah, bring the helicopter, man. <laughs> I'm still looking at a helicopter. I don't know. They wouldn't let me, would they? But they couldn't stop me. <laughs> no, we wouldn't. I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, mean, yeah, I think I'm going to buy a helicopter. I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Fly to work every day. What can go wrong, right? Questions, comments, concerns? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's the waiting, there's the forgetting, but the in between, like the where you're like 
out of battle, like in your mind, what is exactly what's it called? What's it called? What's it called? Oh. What would you call it? Yeah, there's a, uh, there's, a, there's a technical term for it. She's asking if in that, that in-between part where you're waiting for it to go one way or the other, what's that called? I guess you could just call it anxiety, but I, mean, I know what you're asking. What's, the, what's that time period? There is a, a technical term for it. It's escaping me at the, at the oh, moment right regression. now. Regression. What's that? Regression. Regression is when, you're, is when you go back to something. Yeah, like, um, oh, man, you see a lot of people. Actually, yeah, you see a lot of people regress. I don't know if any, if any of you guys know this person. You see a lot with people... That's not a great example, but it's, it's, a, it's a working one, where maybe someone has kids too young, and so they never, they never got a chance to live like those, you know, a certain time period. So then they kind of go back to that time period later on, and so they're that, you know, 45-year-old person in the club, you know, pretending that they're 20, you know, 20, oh, sorry, 21. <laughs> no fake IDs here. Um, that's, a, that's not a perfect example, but that's an idea where you're regressing back to your, your childhood in these ways. Yeah, but there's that time period that you're in between waiting, man. Yeah, like lots of anxiety. You ever get to that point where you don't even care which way it goes, you just want an answer? You know, like you apply for a job maybe, and you're just like, I don't care if I get the job or not, I just want to know if I got it. You know, if any of you guys have applied to college, then you wait for that kind of thing. You, know, you wait for those letters to show up, if you care. Others? And, yeah. So, could forgetting be the acting process of waiting? Yeah. Once you're done waiting, it's time to forget. But there's the thing, though. Oh, yeah. Is it after that? Oh, no. I'll remember the term from the I will. <laughs> I'll remember it before the end of the period. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <No>. This guy. <laughs> Did you get the reading list? Yeah. I said I would, right? Eventually. Eventually. Yeah, the day I told you you'd get it. Not my fault, you don't check your email. Hey, it was Friday. It was supposed to be Friday. No, it wasn't. No, Monday. Yeah, you got it Monday. I got it Tuesday. You got, you check your email Monday then, dude. I can show I sent it. Um, by the way, the idea of forgetting is, uh, just real quick, notice that that's kind of implied that we're supposed to do that here. You don't have to forget. You know, we tend to try to forget those things because we're like, oh, it's... You know, it only hurt me, so I want to forget it. Well, no. Remember you're hurt. Remember you're suffering. Not because it makes you who you are today, but because it makes you who you could be tomorrow. You know? We have this tendency sometimes to do that whole thing of like, hey, you know, I love, you know, it's just all my bad stuff, it made me who I am today. Well, okay, if who you are today is good. But also think about how it can shape you for tomorrow. It, I mean, and all the things it can do for you. It teaches you, first off, think about the most horrible thing that you've gone through in your life, the most painful suffering you've ever gone through in your life. Think about it. Not too long right now. Just get the edge. No one's going to be having a breakdown here. But, <laughs> but think about the worst that you've gone through. You know? Congratulations. You're here still. Yeah. Now, the next, yeah, it's not repressed. now the next time that you're going through something, it's good to think back to how much you were suffering at that time before. Oh, but this is so much worse. Yeah, and back then what you were going through was so much worse than anything you've gone through before that also. You know, but you made it. You're here. And so whatever you're going through in the future that's really bad, always look back on it and go, yeah, but you know what? I'm, I'm here today. You know? This is how you build confidence. When people ask, how do I build confidence? You, you build confidence by getting wins. You know, if, you don't, if, you're, if you completely lack confidence and I ask you, what have you been successful at? Tell me about a thing in your life that you've been successful at. And you're like, nothing. You've never been successful at anything? No. Not one thing in your life? No. Oh, man. All right, well, then we need to get you some wins. Yeah, so the way to console them, nice. <laughs> um, how about this? Every day when you wake up, make your bed. You know, yeah, you get up out of bed first thing in the morning, make your bed. Uh, why? Because you prove to yourself every day that you can do that. That's a little tiny win, but it proves to you that if you put your mind to something, you can do it. And by the way, it's not as easy as it sounds, because even if you like wake up, oh my god, I'm running late. You're already late. Do that. But maybe it's something like, you're going to drink a gallon of water every day. Well, then drink a gallon of water every day. But what if you get to be like, <clears throat> you know, midnight, and you have half of a gallon, you, completely, you just didn't finish it. Down your half gallon. I'm going to be peeing all night. Well, then maybe tomorrow you'll realize how sleepy you are and how you, you have to pay for it because you didn't do what you're supposed to do. Disciplining yourself. Little tiny things like that. You can force yourself to do them. Now you're proving to yourself that you've got a reason to be confident. Oh, you know what? Even in the little things I do put my mind to, I get those things done. Now, let me try something bigger. 
here. Let me apply for a job that's a little bit outside of my reach. Or let me do this, <clears throat> let me try reading this one thing that's a little bit beyond what I would normally be able to understand. Let me try, you know, whatever it is, a little something beyond, a little something beyond, a little something beyond. And then you start to realize that, that you're able to do way more than you possibly thought that you could. You know, if, I, you know, if, if, if running, I mean, yeah, if running is a problem for you, start with a quarter of a mile. Work your way up to half of a mile. And then when you're at half of a mile, remember when, you know, a week ago or two weeks ago that you couldn't do half of a mile. And then you can sit there and go, I can go for a mile. You know, and then you end up going for a mile. And then maybe you get to a mile and you go, if I can do a mile, that means I can do five. So you go out to do five, you can't do five. You can barely do one. So maybe you should do one and a half. You know, because in other words, you hit a wall, you get defeated, and you go, okay. But you don't walk the way that, way that you used to because you've had some, some successes now. You've had some wins. And now you, re you, you realize you have to scale back you know, to the making my bed level of running. Mile and a half now. Okay, and then two miles. And then look at yourself in a year. And remember when you couldn't do five miles, and now you can. Little tiny things along the way that build a reason for us to believe in ourselves. It doesn't do just like Frank was talking about. I can't just tell you, hey, be optimistic. <laughs> you know what you should all do, by the way? Be happy. Give me a reason. Uh, <laughs> I can't. We need to give you some wins first. That's the idea. You have to build in the confidence by giving a person some wins. You know, very, very, very few things in life are so screwed that you can't fix them. As bad as you think something is, as badly as you think you may have screwed something up, oh yeah, you probably screwed it up. But you can also fix it. Yeah. And then once you fix the little problems and you realize, ah, oh, I can fix problems too. And then if you can encounter bigger problems, you have track record of fixing problems, so now you can fix bigger problems. That doesn't mean you should create big problems for yourself to fix. It just means that when you do come across them, you're able to do it. Others? Easy. Um, don't forget, April 17th, these are, are due. Go ahead and put those away and take out your papers from last time.